In this project, our team put highlight on the production of properly woven bag in close association to scientific berhad. This project will focus on the fundamental plant operation analysis together with the circular economy implementation strategy and its outcome. Plant operation of polypropylene consists of three main stages. The first one is solvent polymerization process. As what we see in the schematic diagram, PP particles were obtained after going through separation and recovery of unreacted propylene, dishing, washing in water, centrifugal separation and drying for the after treatment process. The second reaction is bulk polymerization process. This reaction is rapid and the retention time is shortened. The advantages are the system is simple and requires thermal insulation and the polymer obtained is pure. While the disadvantages is heat transfer and mixing become difficult as the viscosity of reaction mass increases. The last stage is vapor phase polymerization process. With subsequent complete elimination of dishing and AP removal operations, it achieves a position that capable of manufacturing high performance products with diverse levels of quality. Meanwhile, for woven bag production, the polypropylene produced in the last stage will be used for the production of woven bags. There are four processes need to be done which are tape bag extrusion, circular weaving, rotogravel printing and finally bag making. The product we have chosen is propylene woven bags. The first proposed circular economy strategy is during the manufacturing stage which is to downgauge in thin film, specifically the BOPP film that will be used during the lamination process of the bag. During the production of the bag, the byproduct produced will be production scrap and liquid waste. The second circular economy strategy is to use the tabs and BOPP film as a recycle fixed stock by mechanical recycling. They will be converted into pellets during regranulation process and added with calcium carbonate to improve the quality of the product. The last strategy is to utilize the propylene trays into profitable product, which is fuel that can be obtained through pyrolysis process. Lastly, the liquid waste will go through the waste treatment plant before being disposed to the environment. The three proposed treatment processes for polypropylene woven bag production that are incorporated with circular economy are downgaging films, pyrolysis of polypropylene threads, and mechanical recycling. The downgaging of BOPP films are almost similar to that of the conventional manufacturing process of the films. The films are introduced to the thickness downgaging system after the cleaning and selection process. This system uses the rotation of the die or the hull off to profile the film in real time. These films offer all the performance of conventional films but from a film profile that is thinner allowing packaging to use less film by volume and reduce the amount of packaging waste they create. Next is the mechanical recycling to recover the films, where the basic film recycling processes include washing and repelletizing, dry processing and repelletizing, converting ground film directly into a product, and densification. Lastly is the pyrolysis of polypropylene threads to fill. The oils produced from plastics have high calorific value as compared to that of gas oil derived from petroleum. The polypropylene threads are introduced into a reactor where they decompose at 400 to 600 degrees Celsius. The boiling point of the produced oil is controlled by the operation conditions of the reactor, the type of reactor, and the presence of catalyst. In this frame, the use of catalyst enables the decrease of cracking temperature, the increase of the reaction rate, as well as the increase of selectivity and consequently the product quality. Moving on to the estimated income generation. This part involves the company's profit analysis pre- and post-circular economy. Estimating a feedstock usage of 134,000 kg producing 1.5 million of PP woven bags per month. The operating cost before implementation of circular economy is 2.8 million ringgit and the total selling cost of the products are 8.0 to 5 million ringgit. This makes a total profit of 5.2 to 5 million with the profit percentage of 186.6%. Post circular economy, we can see there is a reduction in the operating cost to 2.75 million after the BOPP films and tape weights are recycled into the feedstock. Also, production of heavy oil and naphtha via pyrolysis are estimated to increase monthly gain by 3,230 ringgit, summing to a new net profit of 5.328 million with a profit percentage of 193.7%. Thus, concluding that after circular economy is implemented, the company can increase their profit by 7.1%, gaining around 103,000 ringgit extra per month. 
In conclusion, the proposed circular economy strategies complement the key elements of circular economy by reducing the dependence on non-renewable resources and energy, remanufacturing the byproducts to usable and profitable products, waste minimization and proper waste disposal and treatment. Looking into the perspective of environmental impacts, the implementation of circular economy instead of linear economy does reduce the negative impact from manufacturing of plastics toward the environment. This is because through linear economy, more fossil fuels are required to be burned in which increase the amount of carbon dioxide emitted to the atmosphere. Thus, this condition could lead to global warming issues as the temperature of the earth will increase. However, by reusing and remanufacturing by products through circular economy could reduce the waste greenhouse gases and hazardous chemical emitted to the environment. Hence, the pollution can be reduced and avoided, which could lead to cleaner and safer environment for everyone.